then you're guaranteed to get a context-free language. The way you'd say that in math world is that context-free languages are closed under intersection with regular sets. It doesn't mean this. It doesn't mean that if you take a context-free language and a regular set and you intersect them that you get a regular set. That's not true. It doesn't mean that if you take a context-free language and a regular set and you intersect them that you always get, I don't know, a non-deterministic machine. But it does tell you that you get a context-free language. You're not necessarily going to get a finite state machine, but you're going to get a context-free language. If this is context-free, you can't say anything. But if it's regular, then you get context free. That's nice. If we know, I just take my word for that, that that's true. I'll convince you in a minute. Take my word for it. If that's true, then if this were a context free language, then there, its intersection with a regular set should give you a context free language. But its intersection gives you this, and we know this is not context free. So our assumption that this was context free can't be right. And therefore, equal zeros, ones, and twos is not context free. So this identity implies that equal zeros, ones, and twos is not a CFL because CFLs are closed under intersection with regular sets. CFLs are closed under intersection with regular sets. So this identity implies that equals zeros, ones, and twos is not a CFL. If it were, then its intersection with a regular set would give you a CFL, and you don't get one. All right. Are there questions about that kind of idea? You can use closure to show other things are not CFLs, starting with things that you know are not CFLs by the pumping them and then building up closure arguments to get other things. Here's one of the most interesting examples. Is yeah. that just because you can build a product machine with a pushdown machine and a finite state machine because you don't have to worry about there being two stacks? There's just That's exactly it. That's what I want to do in the last 10 minutes. That's exactly it. Very good. You all get that? How could you? When we talk, this is the last 10 minutes and we'll go, then lunchtime. When we took two finite state machines, how did we intersect them? We kind of simultaneously kept track of where we were in both machines, keeping states that had pairs of states in them. And when we were all done, we looked at the pairs of states, both of which were final states, and we circled those. And that new machine accepted all the things that were accepted by both my first machine and my second machine. It was called the product of the two machines. Did Dimitri do that? Did he do the product? How many states? Wait, did that have n times n states or two? It had, two n, it had n times n states. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. You could also do it another way. You could do intersection by a combination of unions and complements. But that requires more of an exponential jump because you end up having to do a non-deterministic combination. So you wouldn't really do it that way if you didn't have to. The thing is, though, that the intersection of two machines, you're basically keeping track of where you are in two machines. Now, there's only a finite number of places. I can be in 10 places in this machine, 8 places in this machine. This machine's got 10 states. This machine's got 8 states. So I can keep track of the 80 possible combinations there might be for me to be in a different place in this machine and in this machine simultaneously. And that's what I do. I make a new machine with 80 states, and I remember where I am in both of these machines, and I keep track. And on a 0, I remember what pair of states I go in there, and on a 1, I remember what pair of states I go to. And then I see which states have both final states in them. And I circle those double, make those final states. It works without too much trouble. So why can't we do that with pushdown machines? Why can't I just keep track of what state I'm in this pushdown machine and what state I'm in this pushdown machine and go fine? Well, you actually can do it as far as the states go. If I have a five-state pushdown machine and a six-state pushdown machine, I can make a 30-state pushdown machine and keep track of where I am in each machine and have a pair of states. There's no problem with that. And the arrows go to the pairs of states, just like they did before. So where does the problem show up? The problem shows up with a stack because I'm only allowed to manipulate one stack. But each of these machines have their own stack. It's like two people getting married, and they each want a closet. 
And you only got one closet in the room. You know, your whole life you get two, you got two closets. <laughs> so my wife got the closet in my room. I don't care. I keep stuff in the drawer. But these machines care a lot. They want their stack, right? Give me my stack. Don't take my stack. So they got to manipulate their own stack. This machine's got its own stack. This machine's got its own stack. Don't touch my stack. So if you're going to make one machine to handle both of these, you can't have one stack simulate two. Well, maybe you could. Go home and try. Can't do it. You can't have one stack simulate two stacks. Some of you might think, hey, wait, what if the stacks only used one symbol? Then could I have one stack handle two stacks that do one symbol? Well, there's a lot of, but these stacks don't have one symbol. They can have as many symbols as you want. Arbitrary stack, arbitrary stack, you can't simulate two of them with one. You only got one stack you can use. So this pr product construction breaks down. And that's what Chris was saying before, uh, very succinctly and very accurately in, in, in one minute. That's what he said before. He said, oh, is it because when you take the product, well, I forget how he said it. He said it better than I would have said it. But you get stuck when you take two machines and do this. On the other hand, what if one of the machines didn't have a stack? It threw its stack away. It doesn't want a closet. It's just a finite state machine. Then everything's fine because you do the construction just like you did before. And on the arrows, you just put in the manipulations for the one stack that stays. So you can intersect context-free languages and regular sets by using a non-deterministic pushdown machine and doing its product with a finite state machine. Okay, writing all that down formally is kind of ugly. Doing a particular example isn't so ugly. I mean, it's probably worthwhile to do a particular example and see what happens. But when you do it, you can always do it constructively and come up with a context-free language because there's only one stack you have to take care of. All right. There's other things that, right, that context-free languages are closed under. We'll talk about them a little bit. We have one or two more days to talk about this whole uh, area. There's one more main thing I want to do. I want to do the membership algorithm that takes polynomial time for deciding whether a string is actually parsed. Okay, and this is, this is whether it's non-deterministic or not. So you give me a non-deterministic machine, a grammar, I can do it in n cubed. Okay, remember we said that, that Yak doesn't like not to have a choice, and it seems like it's crashing. It doesn't have to crash, and it doesn't have to go exponential. You can still do polynomial time parsing with a non-deterministic machine. You just have to be careful. If you want to do really fast polynomial time parsing, like linear time, then you've got to get down to deterministic LRK machines. All right. One last thing. When we talked about closure, and we'll talk about this next time again, deterministic machines and non-deterministic machines differ as to their closure. Neither one of them is closed under intersection, but deterministic machines, are they closed under complement? They are. The same reason finite state machines are. You just toggle the states. Non-deterministic machines are not closed under complement. Toggling the states doesn't work there. It doesn't correspond to the complement language. They happen to be easily closed under union. Non-deterministic machines are closed under union because you just do an emu. But deterministic machines, they're not closed under union because you're not allowed emus. And you can't just do a grammar trick like this. That's good for non-deterministic machines. But if you add this to a grammar, then it's no longer an LRK grammar. If you wonder what LRK, LRK is some big complicated definition, that violates it. <laughs> All right, so unions aren't closed for deterministic machines. Complements are, vice versa for non-determinism. There's a lot of other operations. We'll talk a little bit about them, some of the techniques, review this idea, and then move on to the membership algorithm and finish up uh, decidability stuff. So maybe probably two more lectures to finish up with context-free grammar level, move on to Turing machines.